going to walk through an example of creating a test from the results of another test. And one example of where you might want to do this would be something like a uh, corrective action report or a non-conformance report. So for example, when uh, an inspection has failed, you might need to issue another test that somebody else works on, right? Or that somebody else does a analysis for root cause or something of that nature. So in today's example, we're going to use a receiving test for the initial test that introduces the failure. So we'll just take a look at that. So we're going to take a look at our test templates. And we have a couple of receiving examples, but the one we're going to use today is this receive example, which will have height, length, width, just a visual inspection. And we're just going to say, uh, associate this with anything at all on the purchase order. Um, or sorry, on any anything we receive. Now, if you wanted this to be item specific, you would put in the conditions for the item or perhaps that item category or something of that nature. Um, but as it stands, this would be the trigger for, for that. On our quality inspector setup page, uh, we also have uh, the receiving automation set such that when the purchase order is posted. All right, so the rule, the template, and the setting are basically going to say, whenever the uh, or whenever purchase order has been posted automatically uh, create a test using those rules and uh, create this test okay now our secondary test uh, we're going to use this corrective action and inside of this corrective action report we just have some of the common questions you might ask uh, such as you know the kind of corrective action report um, you know its classification the objective uh, evidence, root cause findings, things of that nature. And what we're going to do for the test generation rules here is we're going to say, well, I actually want to generate it based on a quality inspection test whenever the template code uh, is any of the receiving template codes. Now you'll notice here I'm using a pattern, not referencing a specific one. Um, you, you could just leave it blank or you could put in a specific one if you wanted to have, you know, one-to-one -one mapping of a specific kind of follow-up test such as a corrective action report to that individual test. Um, it is all configurable. Okay, so we have our two tests that we're going to uh, link together. So we've got a corrective action one, that's our secondary one, and our one that's uh, producing it originally, which is the receive action. All right, now the final step that we need here uh, on the uh, table configuration is going to be on the source configuration. And in here, what we're really doing is we're just saying, um, we want to map, or when we're creating a test from a test, so we're going to be putting in our from table here as the quality inspection test. Um, and again, here we're just saying, you know what, specifically when we're mapping receiving to receiving, we're just going to create this corrective action based on the same item variant and lot. Now, in uh, your uh, processes, it might not be, you know, your secondary test might be something different. Perhaps it's nothing to do with the, the item tracking. Perhaps it's based on, you know, the customer or the vendor or, you know, maybe even just the purchase order itself, right? So um, wh whatever information you have available to connect it to, uh, that's really all you need to carry it forward. It, it is all configurable. And in our example, we're just going to map it directly to that item variant and lot. Okay, so now we have told the system how to map the fields, item variant lot. Uh, we have uh, our two templates. We've got the receive template and our corrective action template. Uh, we're triggering our receive template off a purchase line, and we're triggering our corrective action uh, template based off of another quality inspection test. So far, so good. Now, the very final thing we need to do here is on the um, business central workflow side, and you could probably do this with Power Automate. We're just going to do this all um, within the same, uh, I'll just uh, delete this one here. Uh, we're just going to create a workflow such that we, and we're doing a workflow here instead of a Power Automate just so it's all within the same transaction. If you didn't really care about the transaction integrity, you could definitely use Power Automate uh, and just connect it up with the actions. So when the record has been created, uh, then you know call back and create a test. That'll absolutely work fine. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, call this issue a um, corrective action. So we're going to call this issue a corrective action report. 
and we're going to say when a test is finished. So this is now in the context of the first test, the receiving test. And we're going to say, you know what, when I'm finishing a um, test that is a receiving test, and uh, the grade is failed, then I can choose what I want to do with that. Right? So what we're saying is whenever the test is finished, that's going to trigger this workflow. Um, template code can be any of the templates that start with uh, REC. And whenever one of those fails, then what we're going to do is create another test. Perfect. Okay, we're just going to enable this. And that should be it. Alright, so let's walk through uh, an example of that. So we're going to first just create off our purchase order. And we're just going to uh, choose a item that uh, is law tracked. So we'll probably just choose our Ethernet cable here again. Uh, there's our Ethernet cable. I'm just going to choose our green location from uh, Cronus here. And we're going to choose 16 today. All right, so we're going to release this purchase order. We're going to create our warehouse receipt. Now, if we're using uh, Warehouse Insight or WMS Express, at this point in time, uh, when you actually receive the goods um, into your facility, uh, you typically be using a scan gun. Uh, we're just going to you know, pretend that we were using uh, something as cool as that. And instead, we're just going to be typing in the lot number directly. So we're going to be saying that this is uh, our lot here at 15.56 p.m. And we were receiving the full 16, I think, is the number we picked. All right. So we're now going to do close. Perfect. We're going to post our receipt. And this is going to automatically create that uh, test uh, for us, that first test. So we see that receive test. We see it's in progress. And now what we want to do is we want to um, fail it and get that corrective action report test automatically created. So what we're going to do here is just put in some values that cause a failure. So we see here, um, let's put in 29 things just under the boundary. And for the packaging visual state, I'm going to assume heavy damage will probably cause a failure, and it does. All right, so now the test is in a failed state. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, yep, I'm finished testing this. These are definitely the values. I finished testing it. And this is going to trigger then that other business central workflow uh, for when a test is finished. And we see here it created us a new test, the corrective action. All right, now... In circumstances like this, you could do things like connect it to Power Automate for things like, you know, notifying in Teams or sending an email um, or things of that nature if you needed to notify somebody immediately. Um, or if you, you know, had other actions inside of Business Central Workflow, you could do, that all works. Um, but regardless, you do have uh, this test here. All right, so now we're in, we've now got this corrective action uh, report and it's now associated with that same item in that same lot. And again, you can connect this up to uh, whatever you happen to be uh, configuring this with. So let's uh, just put in some initial values here. So let's say um, requirement clause, we'll put this in uh, initial spec not met. We're just going to say that this is a major uh, failure. And uh, this here are chords. So this would be the non-conformance would be uh, chords should be gray. Uh, these chords are blue. Uh, objective evidence could be perhaps the attached photo. And then if you wanted to, you could, you know, take a picture and attach that immediately. Or, you know, just use the attachments and just add it directly in. That's uh, uh, your prerogative. Uh, in our containment actions, uh, we're just going to say that these are um, We'll not do this again. And then the root cause is uh, missed specification to vendor. So in this case, it's our fault. Uh, and our verification of effectiveness and uh, visual inspection on uh, 
vendor spec going forward. And then we're going to say that the customer service representative is, let's see who's in our database. This fellow here. All right, perfect. So now we have some data and then we can always run, you know, one of the built-in reports or your own reports uh, to help kind of categorize uh, this kind of secondary test. All right, so we see, you know, we've got our non-conformance report. Um, or if you wanted to, you could always, you know, run some of the other uh, example reports that we have uh, out of the box as well. All right, so this is an example of how you would uh, associate a um, uh, one test uh, with another test uh, where one example could be something like a, you know, non-conformance report or a corrective action report. Uh, and you can really change these as, as much as you want. Um, or alternatively, you can also just use Power Automate um, and, you know, integrate that with things like notifications or hooks from SharePoint or things of, of that nature. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content.